Welcome to lesson 56 in our interactive notes. Okay. Lesson 56, we're looking at metric capacity and mass. Pages 61 and 62. So our content objective for fourth grade MD measurement data, A1. I can show that I know the relative size of measurement units with a single, within a single system. Language objective, I can use vocabulary related to the metric system to describe which unit would be best to measure different objects. Social objective, I can work with others to identify which unit of measure would be best to measure different objects. All right, so we're looking at two different areas, capacity and mass. Capacity is the amount that something can hold. Another way of saying that is volume. Volume, the amount of liquid, gas, or solid that can occupy a given space cap, uh, capacity. So how much can something that object hold? and what it actually does, that's the volume. We're also looking at mass, a measure of the amount of matter in an object. Gravity affects weight, but not mass. So often when we measure weight, we're looking at the mass of an object, but it's affected by gravity. Because if I went to a different planet or to the moon, since the gravity is different on those, my weight would change, but my mass actually wouldn't. That's why when you see any videos of um, the astronauts on the moon, they're hopping across because the moon is much smaller, so the grav gravitational pull is much less, and so their weight is a lot less, but their mass was exactly the same. So what makes up the object? So in capacity, usually talking about liquid, but not always, um, where there are only two. We've got that milli again, which is one thousandth, and then just liter, milliliter and liter. There's no centi, no deci, nothing, just, just the two measurements. A milliliter, and we use the little m and big L to represent milliliter. A unit of measure of capacity in the metric system. 1,000 milliliters is equal to one liter. Liter, a unit of measure of capacity in the metric system. Plastic soda bottles are usually equal to two liters, two liter bottle. Okay, now we're looking at mass and we have that milli again, milligram is one thousandth, then we have gram and then kilogram which is a thousand grams. So that prefix lets you know what number, what measurement, what unit we're talking about there. A unit of, of measure of weight in the metric system. 1,000 milligrams is equal to one gram. Gram, a unit of measure of weight in the metric system, also mass, about the weight of a paperclip. Kilogram is a unit of measure of weight in the metric system equal to 1,000 grams. And then we do have metric ton. A metric ton is a unit of measure of weight in the metric system equal to 1,000 kilograms, which is about 2,200 pounds, which we'll talk more about soon. Okay, so let's think about capacity first. Capacity the amount a container can hold. So if I poured something into this container, how much would it hold? 
That would be your capacity, often thought of as liquid volume. Okay, so we have metric units. We have one liter is equal to 1,000 milliliters. So you take all these little ones, pour it into a bottle, and then they would be equal. A milliliter, the capacity of 20 raindrops is about one milliliter. So 20 raindrops, that's not very much. It would be like a, not even a full strawful of liquid. Just a little bit of liquid. Often medicine is measured in milliliters, liquid uh, medicine. And then here, a liter is about 1,000 milliliters, so about 20,000 raindrops would make a liter. A soft drink bottle can hold a liter. Usually they hold two. So we're either thinking of a small amount of liquid, like 20 raindrops, that if you imagine you had an eyedropper and you were dropping drops of liquid into something, that would be what you would use to measure milliliters, little droplets, or about half the size of a big soda bottle. Which unit of measure would make more sense? So here we have a punch bowl. Is this closer to five liters or two and a half soda bottles, do you think, poured in here? Or about um, 10,000 raindrops. So dropping drop, 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 drop. Which one would make, I'm sorry, not milliliters, that's liters. 500 liters would be 25 big soda bottles. Which one would make s more sense that was poured in the punch bowl? 5 liters makes much more sense. Sorry, I misread that. Here it's hard to see, but this is actually a trash can. So this is a punch bowl. This is a trash can. If I wanted to pour soda in a trash can, would I pour in five large soda bottles to fill it? Or would it take 50 large so soda bottles to pour it in? Trash cans are usually pretty big, so this more likely holds the 50 soda bottles. Okay, here we have just a can of, of tomato sauce or sauce, sauce can. Would that hold about um, 2,000 raindrops? So lots and lots of little drops. Or would it hold five large soda bottles worth of liquid in there? That is much too big, so this one makes more sense. Okay, this is actually a test tube. You have seen them on shows before. Test tubes are probably about um, about that tall and pretty skinny. So would you be able to, s to pour half a soda bottle in there? Or would um, about 200 raindrops make more sense? The 10 milliliters, that makes more sense. Here we have a teacup. Would putting about, um, let's see, 4,000 raindrops in there make more sense. So little drops, drop, 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 drop. Or 
about a hundred large soda bottles would that fit in the teacup that is much too much so even though this is would take a little bit of time to measure this is much too big okay this is a watering can Would it make more sense to pour two large soda bottles worth of water into this watering can or seven large soda bottles of water into this can? If you poured seven, you probably wouldn't be able to pick it up and then you couldn't water anything. So the four makes more sense. Okay, this is hard to see, but it is um, toothpaste, a tube of toothpaste. Toothpaste tube. Would that hold, no, it's on uh, the littler side, so would that hold about um, 400 raindrops or 4,000 raindrops that drip, 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 drip? This one may be a little bit more challenging, but since it's on the smaller side, the 20 milliliters makes more sense. Okay, and this is laundry detergent or laundry soap. Would it make more sense that there are one and a half soda bottles worth of liquid in there? Or 150. If there was 150 soda bottles worth of liquid, I know I couldn't pick it up to pour it in the uh, washing machine. So three liters makes more sense. More reasonable answer. So looking at what they compare to can help you figure out which answer makes more sense, which unit is more reasonable. Now mass. The amount of matter an object has. Um, one kilogram is equal to a thousand grams. The weight of a gram is about the weight of a paper clip. If you take the little paper clip, that would be a gram. Not very heavy at all. And if you take a thousand paper clips, that would be the weight of a kilogram. So it's about the mass of a baseball bat. So if you imagine the weight of a baseball bat, Still not that heavy, but much heavier than a paper clip. Okay, this is hard to see, but here we have some coins. Here's our one cent, also known as the penny, even though that's actually not its real name. One cent is its real name, penny is its nickname. Nickel. That is its real name. Dime and quarter. So if you can't see it, that's what those coins are. So the weight of a penny is about two and a half grams or two and five tenths grams. The weight of a nickel is about five grams. The weight of a dime is two and 268 thousandths of a gram. So a dime weighs less than a penny. And a quarter is about five and 67 hundredths of a gram. So a quarter weighs more than a nickel. So we need to order the coins, these coins, from least mass to mass to the greatest mass. Well, the least amount would be our dime. Two, and if this were money, it would be like two dollars, twenty, almost twenty-seven cents. That's less than two dollars fifty cents. So this is the least amount. So our smallest is dime. The next would be our penny or one cent.
I'll put penny, but it's actually one cent. Then after that, after the two and a half, we have five or five and sixty-seven hundredths. So this would be like five dollars. This would be like five dollars sixty-seven cents. So next least would be our nickel. And last would be our quarter, which makes the most sense because it's the largest. So here, a dollar bill has a mass of about one gram. So a dollar bill weighs about the same as a small paper clip. Not very heavy at all because it's made out of paper. About how many dollar bills have the same mass as a nickel? Well, if a nickel has five grams, and a dollar bill has one gram. So a nickel is the five grams. A dollar is one gram. How many dollars would we would need to make five grams? We would need five dollars. About five dollars. So five dollar bills weighs about the same as a nickel. Still not very much. There are 40 nickels in a roll, in a roll of nickels. What is the total mass of the nickels in one roll? Well if I have 40 nickels and they each weigh five grams, five times zero is zero, five groups of four tens is twenty tens. It would weigh 200 grams. So 40 nickels weighs 200 grams. All right, now we're going to do some more practice on our three column notes with looking at capacity or what a container can hold and mass. What, how much matter makes up an object.